Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today I'm in Chicago, Illinois and I'm at the Koval distillery. And this distillery is a distillery that was founded through the Kote Destillationstechnik from Germany. It was Dr. Robert Birnecker who was uh, teaching at university and someday he just said, yeah, I want to do distill some whiskey. And then he moved to Chicago and founded this great distillery with his wife together and now he's distilling many many great whiskies and some other spirits as well. So let's see what this distillery is all about. So here I'm at grain storage and Koval takes great care about their grains. They always use non-genetically modified and certified organic grains. And also the grain variety is quite great. They have corn, they have oat, they have rye, they have barley, and they have millet. And when the grain's ready, they fill it into these funnels and they are being milled inside these hammer mills. And uh, when it's milled, then it goes here into this mash tub. And this mash tub is from Kote Destillationstechnik, a German producer that has now one of its, his, um, his outposts here in the US and also sold a lot of distillation equipment to a lot of craft distillers here in the US. And what's special about this mash tub is that this mash tub has a, a water coat around it on the outside that can be heated or cooled so you can control the temperature inside this tub very well. And that gives you the possibility to um, have the enzymes inside the mash tub work at the perfect temperature and produce a lot of good sugars that will ref be reflected in the taste of the whiskey. After the mashing, the yeast is added and the beer is now inside the fermenter. It's called the distiller's beer even though it doesn't have any hops and inside the fermenters the beer is kept at a constant temperature by a water jacket and this temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. This is because at lower temperatures, fermenting at lower temperatures gives you a better flavor that you then find later in your whiskey. So the distillation starts here. All the beer is collected inside this tank and there are pipes going through with hot steam and that, that uh, lets the, the whole beer boil and the alcoholic vapors rise to the top are filled in this uh, funnel here and then um, channeled through this pipe on the back into the column still. The, the pipes in the front is the back set. Everything that uh, liquefies inside the column still runs back into the pots and can be distilled again. Um, the column still is very special because it's been heated with vapor so there's no, there are no bits in it and you can actually um, adjust the level of purification that you want to have within your distillation by adjusting these levers on the side. Uh, the levers with the, the plastic handle and the small L-shaped. By um, turning a lever, you actually turn a plate inside the column still and that, column, that plate inside the column still then um, creates a barrier for the vapor and more um, condensation appears and this means that you purify your distillate a bit more. And the last uh, column in the back with the water condensing on the outside is the condenser that turns the alcoholic fumes that are being produced inside the still back into a liquid and then we have our white dog or uh, the white whiskey. Currently it's distilling a uh, four grain whiskey at uh, 170 proof in the end. That is a lot, but you can adjust the whole still to make bourbon at 160 or lower. It all depends on how you want to make the whiskey and how you think you make the, uh, your bourbon the st style you want it to. After the whiskey has been diluted down to the barreling strength, it ends up in one of these new American white oak barrels and they have about 30 gallons. This means they're a bit 
a bit smaller than the normal American standard barrels with 53 gallons, but um, Cobalt is actually looking into the 53 gallons and maybe they release a product in a few years. What's also very special about the um, Cobalt whiskey is that it is kosher. With being organic, it's pretty easy because you have the certified ingredients, but also you're not allowed to use paraffin to seal the lid onto the barrel. You have to use beeswax for that. Another thing is that you're not allowed to have any mixture of wine and the whiskey. So um, you're not allowed to distill any wine distillates inside the Siri. Cobalt doesn't do that, so there is no problem. To certify that, a rabbi comes in about every quarter of a year and checks the distillery if there are any bottles of wine standing around or if there are any distillates of, um, of wine going on. So this is how you make a whiskey kosher. Um, yes, so the Cobalt Distillery has three warehouses. The main warehouse is where I'm standing right now. One is down the street and the other is across the street. So everything is stored in Chicago. And here up in Chicago, they have a huge difference between winter and summer. So there is a lot of movement inside the, the barrel and you have a lot of exposure of the distillate to the wood. So the whiskey becomes very intense. After the maturation, the whiskey has to be filled into the bottles. And Cobalt actually has a lot of different bottles ranging from 5CL, like a little miniature bottle, going up to the 75CL that is right here. Um, so here's where all the bottles are being put on manually and then they are transported in this conveyor into this automatic machine. And what happens in this first carousel is the bottle is being rinsed out so you have all the, the dust and any bits inside the bottle getting out and the bottle is nice and clean. Also, there is a bit of pressure air taking out the rest. Then we have this carousel going around that actually fills the bottle to the level that is required. And the third carousel does the cork and also adjusts the pressure to the cork so the cork is in, in the bottle at the right distance and the right pressure. The last machine here it uh, puts something over the cork so it holds and also puts on the label. Label is very important because for different markets and for different countries you have different requirements what has to be on the label like a little pregnant woman with the crossed out sign in the UK or in Germany you have to um, have the ABV or anything else on it. And here uh, the, this carousel here collects all the bottles and the bottles are being taken manually and put into uh, cases and these cases are then stored onto a pallet and the pallet is then ready for international shipping to be uh, consumed by any people in any country. So now I'm sitting here with Becky Schultz and you're the communications... Uh, communications coordinator. Coordinator around here. Yep. So um, where is Robert? He is actually in Tokyo. In Tokyo? Yeah. Um, he and Mariah, our chief administrative uh, officer, are there for the Tokyo International Bar Show, which happened this weekend. Show. Yeah, oh, this okay. two-day event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard that Robert is, he did now, I think, 80 distilleries with yep. the Kota Distillationstechnik. Mm -hmm. um, so you're really kicking off the, the craft, yeah, craft distilleries. Yeah. Oh, that is great. And that is all around the world? Or? Mm -hmm. uh, we're in 10 countries, uh, including Japan, Australia, Germany, Austria, a number of European countries. So. Oh, okay, great, yeah. great. And you also have the distillery here, that's yes. why I'm and here. The US. Yeah. And the US. <laughs> yeah. So, what kind of products do you have? Okay, so today we're going to do um, four of our whiskeys, the oat, millet, bourbon, and four grain. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to start with the oat. Um, as you probably saw in the distillery, mm -hmm. um, you saw the grains themselves. Though so everything we have that has a single grain on it is 100% that grain. Um, so this whiskey is 100% oat whiskey. So all the flavors you're getting are either from the grain, the oat, or from the barrel. Um, okay. So we do a medium char barrel, um, aged for about two years. So you'll get a, some notes of maple, a little bit of brown sugar. It's almost like a dessert whiskey. A little bit lighter, smoother. Mm -hmm. but 
You'll see for yourself. Oat. Yeah, oat I only know that from from. Yeah, breakfast. we are we are the only <laughs> distillery in the U.S. to make 100% oat. It's oh, okay. Very very unique. That is great to to have whiskey 100% of one grain, so mm -hmm. you can. It's really mm -hmm. grain forward. So you really know what that grain tastes like mm -hmm. if you have that in like a mixture. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. It's really fruity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's have a try. Yeah. Yeah, I can taste the oat. Well, I haven't had oat in a long time, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, it's great. It's great. You have that. You have a bit of fruitiness. Mm -hmm. Come probably comes from the. I would say it comes from the still, but and now in the end you have some oak, but a lot of oak in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay, great whiskey. So your new distillery, do you do you feel like you're in a in a dynamic work relationship here? I like like the smaller company. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah, so. it's a small team. Uh, we work a lot together, um, co a lot, very collaborative, you know, mm -hmm. we all work in the same little office space, um, okay. so lots of back and forth, um, yeah, and very busy, very busy. And I've seen, like, your team now a bit, yeah. they're all pretty young, I very have to young say. company, <laughs> yeah, yeah, very young company. But the, the age of the, the average worker is pretty young as well, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, Robert, is he like, the oldest, or? Um, Robert and Son are the oldest, but, <laughs> you know, they're not old, old themselves either, so it's okay. a very, very young company. Okay, great that you have such a cool company here. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's continue with the millet. Cool. I'm looking forward to that. I think my father already had that. Oh, really? Um, if you like to watch the video, then just click here. <laughs> and um, he liked the millet a lot. Yeah, so the millet is also one of our more unique whiskeys. Um, also 100% millet. Um, only distillery to make 100% millet in the U.S. Um, it's a lighter cereal cereal grain, so mm -hmm. it has a smoother finish, um, lighter finish. We also use it in our bourbon as well. Okay. Yeah, most often it's found in West Africa or Asia. Um, Do you know? But where it's grown here in the U.S. too. Oh, it's grown. Yeah, here we in source the US. from Midwestern farms. Midwestern farms. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, I always like the nose. Before. Yeah. Okay, great. It's not as spicy. Mm -mm. It's, yeah, you really have the smoothness. How much ABV are we looking at? Um, it is forty percent. Forty percent. Yeah, so eighty proof. Um, mm -hmm. it's what I recommend to people who are interested in whiskey but aren't, aren't whiskey drinkers because okay. I think it's a really easy uh, start. It's a little bit, has, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see it has a smoother finish. Yeah, um, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of oak in the end, mm -hmm. but it, it's great. So mm -hmm. I like the one, it's only, you said it's about two years, which is a bit younger. Two to four years. But mm -hmm. they're smaller barrels. So exactly, I'm, 30 gallon barrels. I don't have that much youth in there. <laughs> Yeah, I really really like it. But it's it's strange that it's it's so so different because you have such a different grain taste. Mm -hmm. Nobody does millet or or, or, or a whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, um. we really like working with the grain. Everything we do is very grain forward, and that's why you know we use only the heart cut um, mm -hmm. of the distillate, which you saw when you were out there. I'm sure, um, and that allows us to get the, the purest cut. Um, and the best flavors. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So, I w I'm looking forward to the bourbon now. Right, and the bourbon is great to taste after the millet because you'll see the similarities in them because the mm -hmm. bourbon is the 51% corn that you need to be declared a bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, and then the rest of the mash bill is millet. So it's 51% corn, 49% millet. Okay, that, that <laughs> is... That is <laughs> yeah, okay, also, cool. yeah, and so, also aged for about two to four years. Two to four years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I'm looking here at a bit of a, a sweeter corn flavor, mm -hmm. and then the smoothness of the millet. Mm -hmm. 
actually sounds like a good combination. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have the corn and, and like, mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know what it is, like vanilla. Yeah, it's more vanilla. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the millet almost gives it a banana finish. More so in the millet whiskey than the bourbon, but you still get a little bit of those notes in the bourbon as well. Mm -hmm. Somehow it has a bit more, more spiciness, I would say. It's, uh, I would say it's a bit more full-bodied than, than the millet alone. I like the millet, but... I like my whiskey a bit more full body, okay. like um, with uh, strong oak flavors. Mm -hmm. So you'll yeah. get more of that in the four grain, which is okay. what we're trying next. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so the four grain is pretty much equal parts um, oat, rye, malt of barley, and wheat. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only the only whiskey we use malted barley in. Um, mm -hmm. So that gives it more of a smoky flavor, uh, a little bit spicier from the rye. Um, a little bit more kick to it. <laughs> okay. Definitely, definitely one of our one of our spicier whiskeys. Yeah, so. I also look like the the complexity within the whiskeys that you have so many flavors. So using four different types of grain. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever had it before. Yeah, it was sort of discovered on accident. On accident. Uh, we had some grains left over. Robert had some grains left over from different things, and was sort of like, well, we have some of this. We have some. Right, we have some malted <laughs> barley, let's just see what happens, and the end product was something really tasty and unique, so we just kept making it. <laughs> okay. And so yeah, and now it's one of our top sellers. Okay, great. So so he made just one barrel and it was like, yeah. damn, we need yeah. more. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Okay, great, great, great. <laughs> yeah, that's the cool thing about the small distilleries. You don't have that long heritage mm -hmm. to carry on to say, yeah, if you have like uh, a Jack Daniels or a Jim Beam, you right. have to have to do it all the same There's way. There's more room for experimentation. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why we have things like the oat whiskey and the milk whiskey things you don't see um, mm -hmm. in the market. So it's yeah. great. Okay, let's have a try. Yeah. Yeah, bit, yeah. Ooh. Now there comes the spiciness. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> very spicy indeed. You have quite different flavors in there. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, I'm not sure if this is because of like the, the organic side. Mm -hmm. I'm really not sure, but I like it that you do it organic style because you know the whole. The whole world is going into a, I don't know, mass marketed mm -hmm. thing and mass produced, but it's great to have a little mm -hmm. craft distiller going there and saying, okay, now we do, do a good quality mm -hmm. and we'll look at all the, our ingredients the right way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, are you open to visitors? Yes. <laughs> um, we take visitors at our tour facility and store at 5121 North Ravenswood Avenue in Chicago. Okay, so you can you can look at the distillation there. Yeah, it's a it's about an hour long tour. Um, we do mm -hmm. Saturdays and Sundays and Wednesday nights. Um, learn about the history of whiskey, the history of the company. Um, get to learn about barrels, the whole process, and you get to taste about you know nine or ten things. So it's great. Tour. Oh, okay. yeah. Nine or ten. <laughs> Small <things>. samples. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Small that's, samples. That's great. So if you're yeah. in the Chicago area, I would highly recommend it to go to the to the. Koval Distillery and yeah. yeah so thank you for having yeah, us yeah thanks for coming <laughs> um, yeah thank you for watching and if you like this video then please give me a thumbs up and thank you and goodbye yeah thanks